गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन वेलकम टू से वीकली हडल आई एम डॉक्टर प्रणीत पलमुरी आई एम जॉइंट विथ माई को होस्ट एंड कॉलिग डॉक्टर अनुप अग्रवाल वी बोथ आर कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट वर्किंग एट किम्स हॉस्पिटल सेकेंडाबैड मोस्ट ऑफ यू नो अबाउट दी फॉर्मेट ऑफ द प्रोग्राम सो आई स्किप द इंट्रोडक्शन टूडेज केस इज वन ऑफ द सीनारियोज विच वी कॉमनली एनकाउंटर इन ए रूटीन कार्डियोलॉजी ओपीडी and i believe most of the physicians also encounter in their practice about evaluation of uh, coronary artery disease so when how do we evaluate and what will be the next step after initial uh, set of investigations will be the core of discussion today so i'll start with the case today and this i saw about uh, two days back in opd which uh, was referred to me by a physician uh, this lady who is 60 year old who has been having hypertensive and uh, diabetes and hypothyroidism for uh, more than 16 years now and uh, she is on regular follow up with the physician and she takes uh, medicines uh, diligently and is on regular follow up there were some uh, gap in follow up during the covid time and now she again uh, gets connected back to the physician and um, uh, as a regular follow up she is uh, being consulted this visit she complained of some uh, vague chest pain the description of the chest pain was not typical of angina it is retrosternal uh, but it is not localized a bit diffuse no relation to activity no relationship to intake of food no relationship to movements of the uh, hands or the chest wall and it is not consistent it is uh, Uh, once in a while uh, coming and going the severity of the chest pain is not intense and it doesn't bother but once in a while it comes and goes which is bringing her attention to the chest pain and because this chest pain is coming here and there she visited the physician now and as a customary the physician because it's long time she ordered a set of investigation including the uh, complete uh, package kind of a thing which also included ecg and echo <clears throat> the basic labs are all okay if there is any uh, specific uh, lab that information that you need i will uh, specifically mention but the complete blood picture renal function test are fine her hba1c is 7.6 her um, thyroid was her tsh was 4.2 her ldl cholesterol was 89 and the cholesterol was 172 total cholesterol and uh, her uh, blood pressure was 150 90 on the examination and the equally the physician's uh, uh, blood pressure was also the same ecg which she uh, ecg which was taken uh, had sinus rhythm with a rate of about uh, 80 uh, there were global t inversions uh, uh, from v1 to v6 uh, symmetric uh, t inversions about 2 to 3 mm deep uh from v1 to v6 echo was normal uh, no normal valves no rwm and good biventricular function because this patient was having uh, ecg changes and the long standing history of hypertension and diabetes so this patient was uh, referred to me for evaluation of a possible coronary artery disease and any need for any uh, further work up so this patient uh, who my saw on uh, examination clinically was okay Uh, as i described the history uh, the chest pain was not uh, significant enough at the same time was something uh, that was not to be ignored equally and uh, this chest pain was something which was bothering her uh, so that was the part of evaluation which had to be done so immediately the questions that came up to my mind is what do we do next is this patient have uh, coronary artery disease and if she has a coronary artery disease what do we do what will be the next set of investigation uh, should we do stress testing and if we have to do stress testing being a middle aged women uh, what do we uh, do the stress testing and uh, should we do angiogram or not should we do stress testing and if we have to do angiogram should we do ct angiogram should we do conventional angiogram these are all the uh, questions that uh, equally came into my mind and uh, i thought this would be a case which we can equally discuss and uh, no opinion from uh, colleagues as well as what do they think so this is the uh, clinical uh, case that we have today i'll start uh, with a uh, discussion from 
my co-host dr anup agarwal and then i'll move forward to other uh, other people in the group and uh, take their opinion as well so anup uh, if this case were in your opd room how would you look at this case do you ask for any other uh, historical findings or any other clinical examination that i am missing and uh, any labs and how would you approach this case what is your take on this case anup hi good evening to all pranit am i audible yes anu am i audible yes you are audible okay all right so you know uh, we all have a little bit difference in how we approach coronary artery disease or particularly occult cardiac disease uh, if uh, i have to and uh, i am a little bit more aggressive in uh, going after diagnosing the disease i am not that aggressive as far as uh, interventional management is concerned but i am definitely far more aggressive in in going a step further to diagnose the disease so that is just my bias that i am telling you up front so you know the way i see it is you have a 60, 60 year old female she has enough risk factors to have coronary artery disease she has she's hypertensive she has long standing diabetes Uh, her A1C is 7.6, but uh, the duration itself puts her at a higher risk of macrovascular uh, complications. And uh, that is one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is that her ECG is not normal. Now it is T-wave inversions, which are non-specific, but nonetheless they are abnormal. And we know that T-wave inversion in isolation is non-specific, but when you combine it with chest pain, now they start becoming a little bit more specific. uh as far as chest pain is concerned i know that uh, uh the cardiology literature it has got various ways of defining chest pain the way i define chest pain is very simply i put them into three categories i identify chest pain as clearly cardiac so i am pretty confident that this is a anginal pain or this is something related to heart or i define a patient as a chest pain as clearly non cardiac which is you know a patient who says that when i press on my chest it hurts or when somebody says it's a epigastric uh, pain which when i burp it gets better uh, or somebody who got punched on his chest and now it is hurting or uh, some pain which gets worse with cough or some pain which gets worse with moving their hands or legs so i can clearly define that there is a etiology for that for that chest pain which is not cardiac and then the third kind of chest pain which is very common which is what this patient has when it doesn't fit into a cardiac chest pain but at the same time you don't have a diagnosis of that chest pain yet you still don't know what is the cause of that chest pain because historically and exam wise you don't have a leading point to say that this is either angina or this is this is non cardiac this is musculoskeletal or what not so in my definition this is a chest pain of undefined origin we don't know where this chest pain comes from so the way i summarize this case is a 60 year old female with a lot of risk factors who has got a undefined chest pain now this patient in my opinion needs a ischemic workup and she needs a dedicated ischemic workup she needs a workup where i can be absolutely certain that she does not have coronary artery disease and if this patient were to come to me i would order a ct angiogram on her a ct coronary angiogram on her why ct because i think uh, this is the best treatment best investigation for me to exclude coronary artery disease in in such subset of course sometimes when you do a ct angiogram and the and the screening calcium score itself comes 800 900 then you can't do uh, but bearing that i would put her on uh, ct coronary angiogram and uh, i will go through the questions that you have put up so when do you do stress testing stress testing is done when the pre test probability is in the intermediate range so in this particular case her pre test probability is already very high she has got risk factors and she has got a undefined chest pain i absolutely want to make sure that there is no coronary artery disease in this particular patient even if stress test comes normal i am still not completely sure whether this patient has coronary artery disease or not so that is why uh, i choose stress test in those who have got a intermediate uh, pre test probability in low pre test probability it does not help because uh, it doesn't add that much value in high pretest probability like in this case uh, even a negative test is difficult to believe which stress modality to choose and why uh, there are various stress tests i will just give you my way of choosing 
any ECG abnormality, any previous cardiac uh, intervention, TMT is out, treadmill test is out. So this patient, T-wave inversion makes treadmill test go out. I get a patient with pre previous bypass surgery, previous stents and all this, I take treadmill test out, out of there. Then comes dobutamine stress versus uh, nuclear. I always choose nuclear because, because I can add uh, exercise to that. Uh, exercise echoes are uh, there. It is just not easily available in our setup. If I have a setup where exercise echo is available, I will do that. But uh, I choose SPECT or nuclear scan because I can do an exercise uh, stress test. If a patient cannot exercise, then I have to choose pharmacologic. And there, my choice between echo and SPECT depends upon whether I want to give a patient adenosine or dobutamine. In certain subset, I don't want to give adenosine, so I put them on DSE. On certain subset, I don't want to give dovitamine. There, I put them on nuclear. So that is my way of choosing which stress test I, I'm going to choose. In this particular patient, I will not do a stress test. I will directly go for a CT angiogram. Why not uh, uh, invasive angiogram? Invasive angiogram I do when I have a objective evidence of ischemia. So like not a, not a T-wave inversion. Let's say if I have ST depression, then I know have objective evidence of ischemia, or if there is a clear anginal symptom, then I would do uh, invasive angiogram. If uh, LV dysfunction is present, or uh, there is some objective, troponin is positive, if there is some objective evidence of ischemia, then I directly go for invasive angiogram. Or when you do a CTCAG and the calcium score shows 800, 900, then I will directly go for invasive angiogram. Your last question is sex differences in various stress testing modalities. Treadmill test, there was this whole uh, previous uh, doctrine that uh, women typically have uh, higher false positive uh, positivity with treadmill. I think that that thought is refuted now. If you look at the recent data set, uh, they pretty much say that the false positivity rate is uh, similar uh, across the gender. Uh, nuclear medicine, nuclear spec, we have to understand that women, they tend to have a lot of uh, breast attenuation artifact and men tend to have a lot of diaphragmatic uh, attenuation artifact. Uh, if you have attenuation correction in your setup, then it really doesn't matter. But if you do not have attenuation correction set up in your hospital, then you need to do an internal quality control of your spec scanner to see if they are able to correct or if they're able to report for that uh, attenuation. Otherwise, you will be doing a lot of, you'll be reporting a lot of false positive spec uh, as compared to what normally it would be. Uh, dobutamine, I don't think there is any gender differences. Uh, I, if somebody has any idea, if somebody has any thought, maybe they can share. But I typically, as far as dobutamine is concerned, I don't uh, segregate gender in that sense. Treadmill, I don't segregate. Nuclear medicine, I do. Uh, but I, the only thing I do is I be mindful of uh, the diaphragmatic versus breast elevation. That's the only thing that I do. Uh, I think I've addressed all your questions, Pranit, and will be happy to participate in any other question you have. Right. So thank you for that uh, summary of uh, your thought process. I, I hear what you are saying about the pretest probability of uh, having coronary artery disease being high. And we also uh, know that women per se are said to be reporting more atypical presentations and the suspicion need to be high. So I get your point of suspecting the probability of having coronary artery disease high. Your recommendation of ordering a, a CT coronary angiogram is also valid, but practically whenever the word angiogram is been uh, said by the cardiologist or the doctor, there is a, an in inherent fear from the patient and they get apprehensive that angiogram all of a sudden, and there is an initial resistance of patients getting angiogram. Uh, even if uh, you, whatever angiogram that we talk about, be it a CT angiogram or a conventional angiogram. And to kind of get the confidence of the patient, they do kind of bargain or request where can we do something else where we can do and if it is a bit convincing enough, then we will try to do uh, proceed for angiogram. So this is again a common uh, scenario which we encounter. So uh, this patient was also in the same mood where the word angiogram when as a part of discussion was uh, bought up. There was a uh, hesitancy and there was a uh, persistence on getting a uh, so-called stress testing to know whether we can do anything better to know the probability that the angiogram, they do not want to go right away. Hence the whole uh, purpose of uh, uh, 
uh, asking or uh, discussing about the stress testing you mentioned about the various modalities of uh, uh, stress testing uh, but i believe all these modalities are equally not available everywhere the nuclear scan and the dobutamine stress echo uh, i i don't think they are available uh, as freely as in the uh, major city but uh, when we go into the peripheries particularly tier 2 cities i doubt whether dobutamine stress echo because it is technically demanding is available and equally nuclear scan Uh, acquiring the radiation material is equally probably challenging, and the age-old treadmill test is the probably the only available stress testing which is available in uh, peripheries or the tier two cities. And if that is the only thing available, and if we have to do this thing, how do we do? Or uh, what is the alternative route? Should we directly skip the so-called steps and uh, directly order for angiogram, or is there any other way? Or how do we? approach in periphery centers maybe for this i would ask shankar sir as his opinion because uh, shankar sir practices in jagitial which i believe in the tier 2 city so sir what are the practical issues that you encounter and if that case comes to you how do you approach and what forms of stress testing do you recommend to your patients sir good evening to all uh, uh... in the periphery it is really a challenging to me but uh, but what uh, uh, the approach uh, i will let you know the as it is suggested uh, he he comes under a pre test probability uh, of high moderate to high but uh, generally we go by whenever a patient with the chest pain with uh, uh, symmetrical t wave inversion from v1 to v6 uh, um, most of the times uh, uh, this uh, lady with uh, many risk factors uh, hypothyroid diabetes and hypertension and uh, about 60 years of age so um, uh, i go by heart score uh, heart uh, sc- uh, pathway score and then uh, so here uh, the history h uh, stands for history e for ecg a for age risk factors and the troponin so whenever we ask for the biomarkers uh, troponin if uh, copeptin is uh, available uh, we can ask for the copeptin also so that uh, we can uh, rule out uh, any cardiac uh, pain uh, then uh, so history here it is uh, moderately suspicious ecg is uh, a non specific repolarization changes are there the age uh, 45 to 65 it uh, one point so likewise uh, if you go through this heart score history ecg age risk factors the troponin levels are known uh so that uh, whether they are within normal limits or more than uh, twice the normal limit or more than two or twice so with this we can find out whether it is uh, she i think uh, she comes under intermediate risk group because uh, already she is worked up with the ischemic work up uh, so she has been mentioned that uh, she is uh, suffering with intermediate risk uh, category uh so the intermediate risk category most of the times so we go by uh, to rule out uh, whether it is a, a coronary artery disease or not we go by functional stress testing and uh, since she is a woman and uh, the the lower predictive accuracy in woman uh Uh, some of the important causes are there uh, for the lower uh, predictive accuracy in women a lower prevalence of uh, cad in women than in men of the same age higher uh, prevalence of uh, non obstructive coronary artery disease uh, and also microvascular disease the more than uh, obstructive non obstructive coronary disease and the microvascular disease will be there and modestly there is a higher incidence of uh, false positive here uh, 
it is it was asked for the gender differences also so modestly higher incidence of false positive st segment depression during exercise so when we asked for the exercise the treadmill test uh, so we encounter the false positive st segment depressions so that will confuse uh, so i as dr anup has alluded to uh, i also prefer to go for radionuclide uh, myocardial perfusion imaging uh, with a technetium 99 or cestomy uh, b uh, so that will be uh, my choice of uh, functional stress testing then anatomic uh, testing uh, i go for the uh, ct angio because uh, the ct angio uh, it, it is more uh, sensitive than the exercise uh, uh, oh no oh. so radio nuclear imaging i go and next is i go for the ct angio uh, but before the ct angio i go for uh, any calcium score uh, whether it is uh, less than 100 or 100 to 300 or more than 400 because if it is more than 400 it will hamper with the image modality uh, then straight away go for invasive angio so mom at the periphery Uh, i leave it to cardiologists so for the functional stress testing and ct angio uh, if uh, these uh, stress testing and uh, functional uh, functional stress testing and uh, this a uh, ct angio are inconclusive then uh, we have to go for invasive angiography thank you one and all yeah thank you sir Uh, I think we have uh, Dr. Kalesh Kobba sir as well, uh, sir. If I ca- if you can hear me, I I know you also practice in a um, peripheral setup. Of course, Karimnagar is right now the hardest uh, place in Telangana. But uh, what are the mode of uh, stress testing that you adopt in your practice, sir? Anything other than TMT? How practically easy it is, and uh, how do you uh, recommend these tests in your clinical practice, sir? Can you uh, can we have your comment, sir? yeah in the, in the, good evening everyone sir in in this patient the pretest po- probability is uh, relatively high uh, most of the times i go for uh, treadmill test only if i if ecg changes are there like uh, lbvb i go for uh, dobutamin stress echo here uh, nuclear uh, testings are not available in karimnagar and also i look for any myocardial damage by troponin t test if a troponin t is positive directly we can go for invasive angiogram otherwise uh, I, i subject the patient for uh, treadmill test and if it is significantly positive mild positives generally we see mild ecg changes like 1 to 1.5 mm st changes if it is more than 2 mm like that i subject the patient for coronary invasive angiogram so depending on the angiogram picture we will plan the treatment mostly we go by trop t and uh, treadmill test or dobutamin stress echo thank you uh, uh, thank you sir and uh, like do we uh, have uh, uh, centers uh, we are talking about stress echo getting it done in hospitals or, or even in diagnostic centers and clinics do we frequently do stress echo sir yeah, yeah i do no i do personally nice Uh, whenever we have clear cut indications like patients with hypertension diabetes and lbbb lbbb and uh, routine ecg i do stress echo dobutamin stress echo good to know sir thank you thank you for your okay. uh, uh, comment sir thank you okay. thank you thank you yeah uh, we have vijayreddy sir vijayreddy sir i i have a specific question for you anup suggested that he would do a ct angiogram in this patient and you also mentioned that when the calcium score is high it may interfere with the um, imaging uh, or the interpretation of the ct angiogram per se because calcium interferes with the uh, it may be giving an artifact uh, because of the shadowing the patient having a long history of diabetes uh, and hypertension and with 60 years of age the probability of having coronary artery calcium is high and the probability of not having a proper imaging is equally high in my opinion 
most of the times when we order ct angiogram uh, the test is not done in the institute they do go out or they get it done in a diagnostic center and most of the time uh, because the, the diagnostic center i believe again technicians looks into it and even though the calcium scoring high they do end up getting contrast and we uh, have to see the images where the interpretation becomes difficult because the calcium score is high and there are so many artifacts where the interpretation is said to be having moderate narrowing or sometimes uh, it could not be commented because of the calcium score and patients end up uh, a bit uh, repeating the investigation both in terms of amount of radiation amount of contrast and equally a waste of time so to speak particularly when patients who are coming all the way from uh, long distances so how do you uh, practically consider these things uh, how, what is your threshold of ordering ct angiogram or do you directly ask them for conventional angiogram how do you look at ordering ct angiogram in a patient sir good evening everybody in, this is a 60 year old uh, female with long standing comorbid conditions the diabetes so my my choice is i will see for the coronary artery calcium score if it is more than 400 i will not ask for ct angio i will straight away go for a conventional angio regarding treadmill test i don't have the the high incidence of false positives in uh, in females uh, in treadmill the postulated mechanism of false positivity in uh, females is the female sex hormone estrogen is actually related to digoxin and digoxin is one drug is known to produce st depressions because of the structural similarity with digoxin false positives are common in females because that are the reason why false positives are common the second thing is as a per, rightly pointed out by dr anup this uh, breast artifacts are responsible for the poor uh, quality of the nuclear studies so i will go for a calcium score if it is high i will switch over the patient to the conventional angiogram hello yes sir i i can hear you sir thank you for hello. the comment sir so so uh, i i understand that you uh, do a calcium scoring first and based on the calcium scoring you order for and uh, yeah. make the decision for an angiogram yes so yes. so the low probability or low threshold of directly ordering a ct coronary angiogram but a high threshold of or low threshold of ordering ct coronary calcium scoring is what i understood sir yeah. what about other forms of stress testing how frequently do you order and which subset of patients do you order the uh, stress echo or spect imaging uh, that we talk about uh, the debridement debu stress echo will usually will will order in patients because we elderly patients who cannot have that uh, physical endurance we will advise um, dsc most of the time sir but uh, nuclear studies especially in females um, i don't uh, um, recommend hello okay sir okay sir yes sir uh, thank you for thank you for the comments sir. so uh, moving forward uh, i i i have uh, praveen uh, with us praveen if you are able to hear how would you approach this case uh, again uh, like uh, from the uh, point of uh, uh, stress testing i'm i'm trying to get an idea of how do people uh, approach uh, stress testing how frequently do they use which is the common thing and other than treadmill how frequently do they use because even my threshold of using this stress testing is uh, low so i want to know from others about how we do use these uh, modes of stress testing pravin acha we i think pravin will uh, has left anup has uh, raised his hand anup do you have anything to share anup yeah friend yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just wanted to add something which is uh, which is in follow up to what shankar sir said and that is uh, using troponin as a risk stratification tool so basically we think troponin as uh, a diagnostic tool for acs 
Troponin positive means this patient is having NSTEMI. Troponin negative means it could be either nothing or unstable angina. And uh, we use troponin elevation as a prognostic marker and all those kind of things. But there is one place where we haven't used troponin as frequently as what we can. And that is risk stratification, uh, like what we do as an outpatient. And this works for high sensitivity troponin. It, it does not work for uh, conventional troponin. And uh, the data is there for high sensitivity troponin T. There is some data for high sensitivity troponin I as well, but uh, uh, T has got a better data set because uh, as you all know, T is proprietary to one company and that company drives a lot of the data versus I is not proprietary to any single person. There are about 16, 17 vendors who uh, make this reagent that calculates troponin I. So the data set for troponin I is not quite well formed for more uh, logistic or financial reasons. So, but anyway, what I'm trying to point out is that, let's say if you do a high sensitivity troponin, which has got a normal finding, normal number of, let's say up to 20. So, Anything more than 20 will be considered positive, which means that now you're dealing with NSTEMI or whatnot. Uh, but what my uh, thought that I'm trying to put up, and that is there is data for that, uh, is uh, if the creatinine is normal, if the kidney function is normal, if everything is okay, then a troponin, a high sensitivity troponin of two versus high sensitivity troponin of 18, are both of them equal? Because technically they both are normal. Technically they both are within the 95 or 98th uh, or 99th in this case uh, percentile of what you would consider as normal. But uh, can, can they both be equated? Can two and 18 be considered the same? So when you order high sensitivity troponin on your patients, sometimes it comes undetectable. And sometimes it comes at a higher range, but still within the normal, still within the normal limit. So what I'm trying to propose is that, and, uh, um, if you are interested, uh, then the attendees can uh, just do a quick search. Um, the use of normal range troponin to risk stratify the patient subset, which means if you have a patient with intermediate to high pretest probability, if you do a troponin, high sensitive troponin on that patient, and while it comes in the normal range, but if it is in the higher end of normal range, that probably puts this patient at a higher risk of having coronary artery disease as compared to those patients where HS troponin is undetectable. It's very similar to, there are numerable tests, numerable studies which have done where they have looked at cardiac biomarkers like high sensitive troponin or anti-pro BNP post-exercise. And a lot of these patients who have occult disease, not a manifest disease, and uh, they tend to have positive findings after exercise that has not directly correlated with short-term mortality. And that is why that is, uh, this practice is not what we do in clinical uh, ground. So because the science is not very clear, the recommendations had not been very strong, uh, but the data, early data is out there. This is an information we can keep it as one of the armamentarium. We should not use these numbers as the sole determinant of what we are going to do next. But if you have a patient where you are not sure whether you are dealing with uh, ischemic heart disease or not, if their troponin, high sensitive troponin, I keep correcting myself, comes undetectable, you are far more assured of absence of significant coronary disease versus if they are still normal, but towards the higher end of normal. Uh, I took a lot of time to get a very simple concept, but I hope I, I was able to emphasize that part in, uh, areas where you don't have fancy gadgets like nuclear stress and all this, this very simple high sensitive troponin tool may actually help you risk stratify a little bit better. Yeah, point valid that um, troponin elevation in any form is a marker of coronary artery disease and you normally should not be expecting them uh, to be elevated. And if it is elevated, it uh, should uh, warrant us to go further for uh, CAD evaluation and maybe low threshold for ordering an angiogram here. Uh, so the the point uh, which I was trying to make from uh, or I was trying to get uh, uh, comments from uh, Vijay Reddy sir was also the same thing on 
how do we make the experience of the patient also uh, easy like for this patient who has come all the way from bimbaram and uh, they took a leave for two days and who want to get evaluated uh, for the purpose because the physician told them that is a, there is a possibility of a cardiac issue and you need to get any evaluation immediately they kind of rushed took a leave for two days from their regular work they both are uh, working employees and that means a lot to took two days of leave in their working time and it is the onus of the physician to evaluate it and use that time efficiently effectively so the luxury of uh, doing the so called textbook analysis is sometimes not possible so you have to kind of choose in the gamut of investigations one test which will probably uh, solve the issue so do you think by uh, by skipping all those things should we directly ask for uh uh in invasive angiogram or should we uh do in a methodical way because practically these are some things which uh, come up and uh, for, this was the same uh, practical issue that i had here so what is the uh, take on this thing so are we okay to skip or we still should uh, uh, go into the uh, this format anup what do you think hello anup are you there yeah i am there i just you know i am working through my phone so i have to figure out how to make it work uh you know i have a bias as i said of uh, being a little bit more aggressive with the uh, with making the diagnosis so if i am i'm at a place which is low in resources uh if i have a patient whom i know will only allow me to do one investigation if i have a patient whom i know is seeing me in hyderabad but stays 300 400 kilometers away if i have a patient who is saying i have to go to dubai to live there for next 6 months you know those kind of scenarios where i want to be certain where i want to be absolutely clear uh, the scientific data will not support me but uh, there are there are many scenarios where i would skip all the uh, paraphernalias and i will directly go for a chondry angiogram there are scenarios uh, uh surrounding remember one thing that coronary angiogram is a lower prognostic tool has a lower prognostic value than a ct or a spect imaging uh this is one thing that we need to be very clear about it uh we all think that coronary angiogram invasive coronary angiogram is the final deal but it has got a lower predictive uh capacity than uh, uh ct or uh, spect so there is actually a uh, clinical utility of doing these tests before invasive coronary angiogram uh, but i still uh, in these scenarios as i said that uh, i can skip all of that and directly go for a coronary angiogram yeah so the uh, the same uh, thought process uh, as the uh, physician who referred to me for the evaluation of coronary artery disease and i have apprehensive patients who are worried whether they have uh, coronary artery disease and uh, as i said being uh, time being sensitive here and uh, 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 we have to do the work up in the given amount of time so first thing with whatever history that i took and the clinical examination i did and the interpretation of the investigations that i could do uh, it did not look that the her symptoms were suggestive of having any significant coronary artery disease she was relatively uh, active and uh, none of her symptoms or the investigations i uh, did uh, suggest me that there is anything and those ecg changes to me looked because of the long standing uh, hypertension probably uncontrolled uh but with the pre test probability of having high and also the uh the mere fact of staying uh, far away uh, a bit distant from the so called advances in medical uh, field i should say and because apprehension is equally high uh i had to do an uh, investigation whereby i can reassure both the patient and the physician who is treating far away uh, so i ha- i ordered uh, direct invasive angiogram for this patient uh, because of the same reasons that we need to do one test which can answer the question yes or no and there are no gray areas left or at least uh, to give them the reassurance that there is no major issues understanding that the events can occur even in patients who have uh normal coronary artery so, so i did angiogram for this patient today and uh, the patient uh, has normal coronary arteries 
so i believe this patient was having either microvascular uh, angina or uh, it was uh, hypertension related ecg changes or the supply demand mismatch causing uh, ischemia so i told the patient about the same reassuring that she does not have any major obstructive coronary artery disease Uh, also trying to reemphasize that normal coronary artery disease um, normal coronaries does not mean that you do not have problem uh, it only means that you do not need any intervention be it angioplasty or surgery but still disease is there and all the risk factor modification control of hypertension control of uh, diabetes lifestyle modification everything is still important and being on regular follow up with the physician is equally important so that with that word of Uh, caution i kind of reassure the patient and send home today so that that was the approach which i did uh, any one would have done in a different way uh, can share their comments or anything else that they would like to add can equally share their comments while while you are uh, thinking about doing anything else i would ask somraj sir what is his approach on this case and anything that he would do different or anything that he would like to add sir your comments good evening uh, anup and uh, pranit and uh, good evening everybody uh, i just want to ask uh, uh, do you have any access to your past electrocardiograms number 1 number 2 also tell me uh, with the t wave in l1 avl Uh, i did not have any past ecgs to compare sir that is the first thing that equally asked they did take ecgs but in the rush they did not bring the old ecgs so i do not have anything to compare in the ecg the one and uh, one and avl had t inversions which were kind of very minimal almost like a flat t wave about 0.5 mm t inversions i yeah, uh, i'll put it this way uh, we often see this type of patients the cardiac pain uh, pain uh, non cardiac almost and the description you gave and then uh, uh, the t wave inversions uh, in this patient i would uh, typically ask for uh, v7 v8 v9 the t waves are upright in those leads i won't bother about the t wave inversions in the chest leads in a female patient particularly to access to her past electrocardiograms i would almost never do a angiogram straight away and uh, uh, i would depend upon some form of uh, functional testing if you have a good uh, echocardiography laboratory and uh, in the absence of lvh significant concentric lvh i would uh, ask for a dobotomy stress echocardiography uh, alternatively uh, stress mpa and uh, not at the first choice stress mpa has its own limitations and interpretation issues uh, properly done stress echocardiography is still very useful and uh, i would almost never have would have gone for straight uh, coronary angiography in this patient in this type of patient and secondly the uh, ct calcium uh, is age related and if ct calcium is uh, uh low and if the if you are uh, uh, it's not uh, significant if the patient has anything to suggest by way of the nature of chest pain or uh, other issues ct coronary angiogram is not a bad choice if the coronary ct calcium is not high ct calcium high is no indication for coronary angiography in this patient thank you so thank you for the uh, comment sir but uh, my, i have few follow up questions on this patient like uh, the ct coronary artery calcium scoring has been proposed to be one of the risk markers for evaluation of cad to or to predict the future events and i equally get your point what you said about the prevalence of higher calcium scoring in elderly patients and equally with the presence of hypertension and diabetes which subset of patients uh, do you think they should be ordered uh, uh, ct coronary uh, calcium scoring uh, do you think younger patients only or if uh, somebody who is at 60 ish do you think it is absolutely uh, not valid to order uh, ct calcium scoring or 
how do we uh, interpret these reports if we have to order because sometimes they do carry the investigations and if we have them how do we interpret them and how do we uh, go further yeah i we discussed the issue of young patients earlier also yes sir. young patient to the smoker and there are other risk factors and the absence of uh, cd calcium is no indication for absence of disease yes. and uh, we should not rely upon cd calcium in such patients and uh, go by uh, clinical risk factors and uh, don't go by cd calcium for me cd calcium is like white hair or gray hair don't overuse it and uh, it has a significant issues and don't depend upon that too much thank you yeah uh, thank you sir point point valid sir so the the basic rule of uh, uh, knowing uh, how do we interpret the reports or how is the investigation going to change your uh, diagnosis or your management is something that needs to be known uh, unless we have a proper uh, uh, pretest notion of how this investigation is going to change your line of management or the diagnosis you should not order investigation this is something which i learned as a first lesson during my days of uh, medicine and i think it still is valid no matter whatever investigation starting from a complete blood picture to uh, fancy investigations like uh, ct coronary artery calcium scoring or angiogram for that matter unless it is not helping in making a diagnosis changing the treatment or adding any value it probably is only going to end up in uh, creating a lot of confusion rather than helping the patient so point well it's uh, the investigations that we do uh, should be uh, uh, selective and it should only help in making the diagnosis or getting information clear so th this patient who is uh, having these uh, risk factors because of the apprehension i had to uh do the uh, kind of conventional angiogram and uh, i could uh, reassure the patient i i i i believe that was the thought process which was uh, made me looking into it probably if i had some time i would have equally reassured her just because she was staying far away and uh, bit, because she was a bit more apprehensive i had to be doubly sure and uh, hence i ordered uh, angiogram in this patient uh any any other uh, thoughts or uh, comments on this uh, case or anything that anybody would like to add uh, before we could uh, close the session uh excuse me uh, before we go for uh, this uh, functional test testing uh, is there any role of uh, echocardiography because we are in the periphery uh, if uh, uh, extensive wall motion abnormalities are seen uh so we can uh, go for uh, this uh, stress echo or a stress spect uh, even in the viability of the tissue also we can go for a st stress pet we can refer only for uh, these investigations so uh, are we avoiding uh, echocardiography in this case because uh, we are in the periphery we rely on only ecg and uh, echocardiogram and uh, troponin levels so we don't have a ct angio or uh, uh, invasive angio especially in our jagitial so uh, so what is the role of echocardiography finding uh, um, wall motion abnormalities uh, at rest so so role of echo is absolutely valid sir so every patient should undergo a 12 lead ecg and an echocardiogram Uh, again because uh, women and diabetes these patients may not have a classic presentation so a typical presentations could be there and that chest pain could be very well a marker of an ongoing ischemia both remote or past if a patient demonstrates any regional wall motion abnormality that itself is an indication that the patient already has a coronary artery disease and then there is probably no role of doing any more uh, stress testing this patient would probably deserve a conventional angiogram because the diagnosis is made provided there is no other cause to explain regional wall motion abnormality and for this patient the first possibility of having a regional wall motion abnormality is an ischemic heart disease though there are other possibilities which can equally contribute to rwma so as a rule coronary artery disease needs to be ruled out for any patient who has an rwma in echo 
uh, the diagnosis is uh, coronary artery disease unless proven otherwise and this patient should deserve uh, angiogram versus if the uh, echocardiogram is normal then we are trying to bring out uh, or induce ischemia and trying to see the probability of coronary artery disease uh, provided we able to induce it properly in a safe way because uh, we are stressing the heart there is a possibility of having uh, issues or complication which the operator needs to be ready of and equally the image image uh, acquiring proper images and equally having the uh, ability to interpret those images which is again a bit of a technical expertise which a person need to acquire to give a proper uh, uh, justice to the patient so uh, if the patient has a rwm to begin with then there is no role of or there is no need to do uh, stress echo unless we are doing it for other purpose versus if the patient has a normal echo then uh, if the operator is comfortable then he should do a stress echo in my opinion thank you uh i think there is a hand raised no uh yeah anup uh, you have anything to say so pranit you know i will add on to what uh, somaraju sir was saying regarding uh, the calcium score the question that that you raised whenever whenever we are ordering calcium score we need to understand what is the purpose of ordering calcium score and almost always if you look at it be it in terms of risk certification or what not no matter what we call it but at the end of the day we are doing calcium score literally to to answer the question should we start this patient on statin or not no matter how much we go round and round about that is literally the reason why we are ordering calcium score that is to know whether uh, whether this patient uh, needs to be started on statin or not because it is it is a risk it is a risk parameter and so far we have statin as the best uh, drug in our armamentarium so if you have a patient whose clinical indi indices already tell you that this patient should be on a statin then ordering calcium score other than just telling you that there is calcium in there and this patient is at high risk which you anyway know with their clinical characteristic doesn't add any more value the calcium score of 200 versus 500 a patient with diabetic doesn't add any value because you know patient with diabetes age 60 they they already are at a higher risk of uh, cardiac event so if the patient's clinical decision already is pointing towards starting statins then calcium score does not add any value the example that somaraju sir gave a 40 year old guy who is smoker who has got some risk factors for coronary artery disease you have to assume that there is risk there is a event rate associated calcium score is not going to change your management even if it comes zero so that is one aspect of it and the second aspect of it is that white white hair or gray hair concept that at some point we have to ask ourselves what is a premature cad and what is not a premature cad so doing a calcium score in a 70 year old also does not make any sense because at 70 plus if somebody is getting a cardiac event that cannot be characterized as a premature cad that like you would expect a person at age 70 or or more than that to have some degree of atherosclerotic changes or endothelial damage or what not so there also having a calcium score of 100 200 probably does not add add any value so whenever i am ordering calcium score these are the two very key question that i am asking number one is the patient already on statin if it is then knowing the number in calcium score does not add any value and second do i think this patient will have some coronary calcium just by the mere virtue of age and if that is the case which will go out of the premature uh, uh, atherosclerotic disease uh, criteria there also calcium score does not uh, does not add any value because you have already passed the age or age where somebody would characterize you as a premature cad i hope i hope i'm able to make that clear uh, calcium score has got a very specific role and if we apply it correctly it helps us trem tremendously uh, dr anup can i add something here yes sir Uh, i often in in in, uh, in our practice in uh, that is a uh, calcium score uh, i use it uh, for two specific reasons uh, it has a uh, limitations to be understood as you already pointed out 
and secondly the patient uh, if you are planning a, a ct angiogram in a older individual uh, i often ask for a ct calcium beforehand before they go ahead with ct angiogram because ct angiogram cannot be interpreted properly once you have ct calcium high and secondly uh, ct calcium sometimes we still do uh, when we plan uh, say coronary intervention in elderly person where ct calcium uh, calcification coronary artery is best evaluated by ct calcium thank you absolutely sir i think that point is well taken when we are talking about intervention uh, the calcium density scoring distribution that all helps us in planning the procedure in fact the same thing we do for tavr as well where if the aortic valve calcium is very high then we change our strategy in how we are going to implant the valve versus uh, if the calcium score is low so definitely from the intervention standpoint uh, knowing that calcium is very very important the reason why i didn't bring up these kind of things is because uh, um, most common reason why we order is for risk stratification and uh, i think that uh, i mean talking about interventional part i thought that this will just be too technical uh, talking here but uh, definitely it adds tremendous value in cto cases where we are deciding whether we should do rota or not uh, whether we are deciding from where to where we need to land our stent and more importantly if there is hugely calcific lesion then i know i wouldn't be alone doing this angioplasty then i will make sure i have at least one if not two person available with me because i know i am dealing with a hugely calcified lesion i will need help there so definitely a uh, uh, point uh, uh, worthy of discussion so there is a question in chat box by salma so for somebody who is diabetic hypertensive on statin and regular medications keen to prevent cardiac event what can be the best evaluation testing uh, anup uh, would you like to uh, take this question uh, pranit let me read the question one more time can you can you read it out for me so somebody who is diabetic hypertensive uh -huh. on statin and regular medicines keen to prevent a cardiac event what can be the best evaluation testing so you know truly speaking a patient who is diabetic uh in the appropriate age group who is already on appropriate medication in this case including statin other uh, uh oral hypoglycemic agents and what not they are already in the correct track and if they are asymptomatic i do not recommend any further investigation on those in fact i would i would uh, direct all my energy and resources on uh, risk stratification Uh, sorry on risk factor modification i must say i correct myself risk factor modification which means i will save that money and do uh, analysis like their vitamin levels uh, i will check their cholesterol a little bit more frequently which means rather than annually i may check it early on every 6 months uh, i may actually invest a little bit more on good drugs if the ldl does not come to target so rather than doing more exploration i will be more in an action mode uh, if i see a patient like this and i'm talking about like the index case that you mentioned uh, that the question has mentioned patient in the appropriate age group diabetic already on medications including statin no cardiac symptom whatsoever in those patient i do not think they i need to do any extra investigation for ischemia yeah yeah so so the so the same thing as uh, anup was saying the point of uh, meeting the targets or uh, uh, making sure that they reduce the risk factors to the lowest possible well control uh, of hypertension with the targets of less than 130 80 a1c is close to 7 or less ldl less than 70 and if the risk is higher to dropping it further down and as anup was saying about using the drugs which are a bit expensive probably which can achieve your targets better so rather than investigating more because the answer is already uh, or the question is already answered that this patient is definitely at risk and hence it's all about uh, reducing the risk or modifying the risk factors as much as we can to prevent and future acvd event i think that answers your uh, question selma uh any other uh, thoughts before we uh, wrap up uh, today's session
uh while you gather your thoughts uh, anup can you uh, sum up uh, about uh, today's discussion and anything else that we have uh, in today's session yeah pranit so you know the discussion is very relevant because this is very common this is something that all of us encounter and uh, i still believe that because we have a lot of options for ischemia evaluation and because there is no strict straightforward guidelines or algorithm to follow many of the times we end up ordering tests uh, without much thought process in terms of what we are ordering and all this and then we end up getting a result which which we don't know what to do so few points to mention number one we need to understand the pretest probability of any patient who comes to us with chest pain second we also need to appreciate that chest pains have not read the textbook they are not classic most of the time and in fact i would say 50% of the time so you should give these patients the benefit of doubt and uh, err on the side of evaluating these patients more often particularly if they have risk factors uh, third the modality that we choose we should give a little bit of thought process uh, one question that we should ask is whatever the test result comes are we ready to believe that test result if we cannot believe that test result positive or negative then there is no point ordering that test so you can't order a test expecting it will come positive or expecting it will come negative uh, whatever test comes you have to uh, believe the value and if you cannot believe the value then maybe you should not order that test then maybe you should order something else uh, there are individual roles for ct angiogram we discussed about treadmill test dobutamine stress echo uh, somara ji sir pointed out a very relevant point if you have a long standing hypertension with lvh on a routine echo then uh, doing a dobutamine stress echo is probably not a good idea because it may be arrhythmogenic in those patient subset uh and the nuclear medicine spect scan we discussed about the limitations availability and also that it is technically a little bit more demanding and i urge each one of you if you do have nuclear spect in your hospital do your own little quality control internally to make sure that the reports that you are getting are well thought after report as compared to something that simply machine regurgitates and that is what is reported in your hospital uh my nuclear medicine faculty he told me during my training that you give me any test any scan and just by playing around the color scheme i can make it positive or negative so i think uh, a certain level of uh, uh insight is required whenever we are reporting this kind of test uh having said that we should also learn how to interpret these tests be it positive or negative and uh, last but not the least which was not discussed here but i will i i, I will say not every chronic artery disease requires a interventional management but every single chronic artery disease requires a very aggressive lifestyle and pharmacological management so that is overall what i would summarize pranit uh, over to you dr uh, anu uh, no, can i add something here sir yes sir most of it uh, is already brought out by all of you i just want us to be aware of the limitations of our knowledge and evidence base available including randomized clinical trials the uh, the subsets of uh, coronary artery disease are enormous and then no amount of knowledge no amount of randomized trials will help you in individual patient you should have that humility to try to go into further details about individual patient and individualize and make decision and take responsibility and accept it uh, i know of patients where we did a we do coronary angiogram and we say everything is all right the patient is dead two days later uh, we, that humility is extremely important and our knowledge of coronary artery disease is still incomplete thank you absolutely valid point sir uh, that uh, as i equally said patients uh, angiogram being normal doesn't mean that everything is normal we it only means that he doesn't need intervention which is what this is a statement that i used to my patients so every investigation has its limitations and we should uh, be humble and uh, enough to understand these things and the same should be communicated to the patient uh, it is 809 so we'll uh, close today session so uh, note is that we do weekly huddle uh, every wednesday 7 to 8 pm the joining link is the same we do select the common clinical uh, problems which we encounter in our daily practice 
if you have any topics which are worth discussing please do share with us we will bring it up in one of our sessions all our sessions are recorded and they are uploaded on youtube and the podcast and if you have your dead time you can listen to them uh, until next time uh, thank you for everyone for joining and good night everyone stay safe